Cube 3 and GT229 have the possibility, if all things go well in clinical trials of course, in being a potential cure to androgenetic alopecia. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the mechanisms a bit with Cube 3, and I'm also going to talk about GT229 and how these things could potentially be paired and give a synergistic outcome. So let's get right into this video. intricate world of hair loss research, the University of California Irvine has made a pivotal breakthrough by uncovering the potential of a signaling molecule, SCUB3, in stimulating hair growth. Now, this discovery here could revolutionize the treatment landscape for androgenetic alopecia. As detailed in their developmental cell journal article, the investigation centered on the dermal papilla cells. These are specialized fibroblasts located at the base of each hair follicle, and they play a crucial role in hair growth cycles. However, the exact molecules that activate these cells have remained elusive until now. Research has revealed that these cells produce SCUB3 naturally, and this molecule subsequently prompts hair stem cells to begin division, leading to the emergence of new hair. The study underscores that individuals with androgenetic alopecia experience a malfunction in these critical cells, resulting in diminished production of activity of molecules like SCUB3. Through an innovative mouse model, researchers pinpointed SCUB3 as the central signaling molecule responsible for robust hair growth. This was further validated when SCUB3 was introduced into mouse skin containing transplanted human scalp follicles, leading to the rejuvenation of dormant human and surrounding mouse hair follicles. Given the limitations of current FDA-approved treatments for androgenetic alopecia, such as finasteride and minoxidil, which are not universally effective and demand daily application, SCUB3 emerges as a beacon of hope. Recognizing its potential, UCI is progressing with patenting SCUB3 and its related compounds for hair growth stimulation with more research on the horizon in collaboration with biotech firm Amplifica Holdings Group, Inc. But to delve deeper into SCUB3, SCUB3 stands out as a fundamental protein in hair growth regulation. It originates from the overactivization of the hedgehog signaling pathway in dermal papilla fibroblasts, which are integral in the hair follicle stem cell niche. Notably, active hair follicles in mice predominantly feature SCUB3 in their dermal papilla, whereas it is conspicuously absent in dormant ones. Direct evidence of SCUB3's hair growth potential emerged when its human variant was introduced into mouse skin leading to a marked hair regeneration. Intriguingly, SCUB3 functions via the TGF beta signaling pathway. An uptick in this pathway's activation is observed in hair follicles enriched with SCUB3. When this pathway is pharmacologically halted in genetically modified mice, the rampant hair growth is arrested, which only underscores SCUB3's reliance on the TGF beta pathway for its effects to actually work on the hair follicles. The parallels between these findings in mice and patterns observed in human scalp hair follicles suggest SCUB3's formidable potential as a therapeutic cornerstone for hair loss treatments. Now, I've talked about GT229 before, a protac that targets the androgen receptor for degradation, and how it offers a comprehensive strategic strategy for treating androgenetic alopecia and other related conditions like acne vulgaris. On one hand, we have SCUB3, a critical protein associated with hair growth that has been identified as a vital factor in reactivating dormant hair follicles. By boosting SCUB3 levels, it is possible to reinvigorate hair follicles that have been dormant for quite a while, and then once we kickstart their activity promoting new hair growth, we can potentially use GT229 to get rid of those androgen receptors that DHT would target to destroy those follicles. So we're essentially bringing back those hair follicles online, allowing them to start growing hair, and then eventually introducing GT229 in order to keep them from being targeted by DHT. One thing I will say is, we don't really know if these hairs would potentially 
still need the androgen receptor in order to work with SCUBE 3. So this is just my thinking. This is my personal opinion. I think there needs to be some sort of intricate dance between hair regeneration and androgen receptor activity. And it is conceivable that during the regenerative phase, hair follicles might require some sort of stimulation from the androgen receptor to return to their native productive state. Thus, while SCUBE 3 stimulates hair growth, it might be essential to reduce the presence of DHT during that sort of rebooting process. So using medications like finasteride or even dutasteride, I think is still going to be in play. However long that period will have to be, I don't know. I think there definitely will be some more research as the clinical trials for SCUBE 3 continues, as well as for GT229, and hopefully things go well for these two potential treatments. So yeah, once you have your SCUBE 3 turning on your dormant hair follicles, it might be essential to keep taking finasteride and dutasteride because we don't really know if the androgen receptor is still needed to bring back these hair follicles, but assuming that the androgen receptor is still needed, you keep using your scoop 3, bring back your hair follicles, maybe a couple rounds of scoop 3 will promptly bring them back, and then after that, when the hair follicles are there, you target your scalp with GT229 to degrade and remove the androgen receptors, effectively shielding the hair follicle from the miniaturizing effects of DHT binding. And a potential upside that I see here is that once the periodic SCUBE 3 treatment rounds are done for a hypothetical patient, they may only require non-daily, possibly weekly applications of GT229. So in essence, while the prospect of using SCUBE 3 to reawaken dormant hair follicles and GT229 to safeguard them from subsequent miniaturization is enticing, a delicate balance might be required. This balance ensures that the hair follicles receive the necessary stimulation that may or may not be needed through the androgen receptor while they're trying to be rebooted with SCUBE 3, all while taking finasteride or dutasteride to reduce the presence of DHT for those hair follicles that are coming back online, and then after that targeting the hair follicles with GT229 to essentially keep them there. And I think I've been reiterating this point over and over again, but I just want to give the idea of at least how I can see these two medications or treatments going hand in hand and potentially curing androgenetic alopecia. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you got this far, comment rice water in the comment section so I know you got to the end of this video. And be sure to check out the community Discord server in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.